Hello, welcome to Show Studio. Um, today we're discussing um, Marnie and their Autumn Winter 2018 show that just happened a couple of hours ago. Um, here with me I've got a set of lovely panelists which I'll let you um, introduce themselves. So starting with uh, Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Sinclair. Uh, I'm a fashion illustrator. Hi, I'm Harry Fisher. I'm the senior buyer at Machine A. I'm Trina Vicarda. I run Saraband, was previously at Tom Brown and Alexander McQueen. I'm Pearl, I'm a menswear designer. And I'm Dina Bonatich. Uh, and uh, we're here to talk about Marnie, but specifically the topic of um, kind of how, in terms of menswear, um, a catwalk show gets translated onto the retail floor. Um, I think we've got a great panel here that can all come from their own aspects. Um, and um, yeah, so I want to talk to you about Marnie as a brand first. Uh, and kind of instead of me describing it, I would like to read a quote from uh, Francesca Risa, its creative director um, since 2016. In a recent interview for Vogue um, UK, he said about Marnie, so what Marnie is, according to Riso, is a mystery box, the kind you see in cartoons with a big fat question mark painted on top. Marnie is a vortex of extreme influences and playfulness and contradiction of dynamism, he said. It's many things, and I think it's the immense number of possibilities that is so exciting. So here we have four people. Who is a fan of Marnie? Who is not a fan of Marnie? Um, the new versus the old. Um, that's what I want to know. So a bit about the history of the brand. In, 2000, in 1994, sorry, um, it was founded by Consuelo and her husband Gianni Castiglioni in Italy. Um, and it was kind of founded on the back of um, Gianni's uh, family fur business. And that was kind of how Marnie started. So it was all about kind of creating a contemporary, contemporary silhouette with fur, something very traditional. Um, in 1998, um, the brand launched, uh, launched bags and shoes. In 2002, it, uh, it launched its menswear uh, line. And then in 2012, uh, Renzo Russo from uh, Only the Brave Group, so OTB Group, who also acquired Margiela, Victor Rolf, and Diesel, um, they got the majority stake in Marnie. Um, since then, um, it was kind of like in talks that Consuelo was like not really happy with the new setup. Uh, and in 2016, um, she kind of left on a note of like, personal reasons. So there was never really explained why she decided to go. There was not like, oh, there was differences in opinions and stuff like that. We never really actually got to know what it is. And then Francesca Riso in 2016 um, joined, um, came from Prada, and who also worked before with Alessandra Delacqua from Numero Ventuno. And um, yeah, so it's been, since then, the collections haven't been really um, well received. That if like, yeah, we're to judge by critics. Uh, but let me stop talking and I'll <laughs> let you start talking. Sorry for the lengthy introduction. Um, so yeah, so what do you think? Like, is Marnie in a good position as a brand? Not? I think so at the moment. I mean, like if, if we think about trends, we know that the Gucci has got this, has been leading this huge trend, which is really about having some fun with fashion. And Marnie is a brand <clears throat> that can have fun with fashion. You know, and, and definitely being an Italian brand, and we spoke about it just before we started the talk, and he clearly says it, you know, it has the ability to be playful. I think there's definitely a market for that right now. And it has the ability to be very wide in what he does. And if we're thinking about, I say, global trends, men are definitely much more um, aware about fashion and more experimental with fashion. And you've got a brand that is, has got a lot of the codes and he seems to be playing with the codes quite well. I think the problem is right now, you've always got brands that are hot and then brands that are not as hot. Yeah. And whether the product's great, whether it's the, the right kind of product for what people want, you know, you've got a lot of noise with Gucci taking it. Yeah. Do you so, think Marnie's on the hot side or the not side right now? I, I think that the um, product is interesting. I think that what he does is, is really well placed within the brand. It feels right to the brand, but it still feels like interesting. And I think, he, I think that the breadth that the brand can do is broad enough. Um, again, it's just whether you're hitting, I mean, we talked a little bit about the, the casting. They're really looking at every market, you know, perhaps some older customers might not want to wear Gucci. It's yeah. perhaps a little bit too playful for them, yeah. a little bit too sparkly. You know, <laughs> you've got, You've got the non-sparkly version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I think that, oh, sorry. No, go for it. I think that when we look at the casting as well, it's, it's really important because it creates this kind of young kind of, I mean, when I look at it here, we, we can see that the mix of, of like the boys that are in here, but the young, the fact that it feels young makes it feel a lot more relevant, even if it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just watching, so um, the collection on our screens, and um, there's definitely that sense of I feel I understand what you mean by compare, not comparing it with Gucci, but putting it in the same conversation, kind of. Um, what I think with Marnie, what Francesco did so well, in my opinion, which I don't think people give him enough credit, is taking that um, kind of brand ethos that Marnie always has had thanks to Consuelo, who's an incredibly intelligent um, kind of Italian lady who always was super, like the designs were super ladylike. There was, they were kind of, you know, related to Celine in a sense where it was an intellectual woman. Um, it was, they worked a lot with different artists. They collaborated with, um, I've got somewhere written down. So Gary Hume, Richard Prin like Prince, like so many different kind of contemporary artists. Um, on establishing that sensibility. What he has, like, came in, it was like, no one is gonna like him from the beginning in terms of the fashion industry because everyone liked Consuelo so much and her aesthetic. And there was never a bad review of Marnie, I feel, in, like, I've never read one. So, kind of, he came in her place and, of course, everybody's gonna have, like, a much more, like, strict eye. But he definitely kind of took everything that Marnie was and, like, added his own playful touch to it. It was a bit, it is a bit rough around the age, edges, and I feel like people are not used to that with Marnie because it's usually very sleek, and, um, but I think that's exactly why we're talking about it right now in menswear, because it, like, Mar it's as if, like, since Francesca Rizzo joined, like, this is the first time Marnie's men's collections are actually worth talking about um, in terms of shows. So, um, Megan, you are an illustrator, so obviously you've been to different shows. How, how have you seen kind of menswear in recent years becoming, <clears throat> is it becoming more eclectic? Is it becoming more interesting to illustrate? Um, I think it's always a difficult one because with illustrating catwalk shows anyway, you're very much just picking up um, the sort of flash of exactly what you see as it comes, comes down and you kind of miss certain moments. So actually, um, I think menswear in general is a lot more fun uh, and a lot more accepting of mistakes within, within work. Um, and I think um, mistakes as in, in that sort of term, um, because actually I think mistakes within menswear, menswear is what brings that sort of um, wider open approach that kind of opens it up to a much wider audience. And I think menswear is, um, I know it's much more playful and, and there's, there's a lot more of an audience for playful menswear now than there was. Um, but it's interesting to see how um, brands are sort of changing between having this sort of staples that the everyday gentleman can wear to the playful young um, experimentation. Um, but to draw, I think the silhouettes, the silhouettes of a collection is, is the staple thing for any illustrator. Um, and I think Ma what Marnie do so well is um, mix those sort of classic silhouettes, but with um, the most amazing fabrics, the most amazing prints, the most amazing sort of collaborations on um, mixing that sort of tailored aspect that any gent could wear to also having those fun directional pieces. Um, and I think that's why the casting is so great for that because it kind of shows that yeah I think you know like a collection in menswear I feel like it's changed what that means you know, before a collection in menswear it was like okay we have a suit we have a mm. coat yeah. there was that kind of essence of what <coughs> menswear was mm. um, I feel like now it's not really that anymore and it is I feel like a lot <laughs> thanks to people that are, you know, guys that are starting to buy accessories from the catwalk. So you, you have, um, you know, Raf, who does loads of accessories, um, Balenciaga and Demna behind that, um, you know, Off-White. They, like, it's, like, there's, I feel like accessories have bec are becoming, men's accessories are actually becoming a viable market now. It's not so niche anymore, which I'm sure both um, Harry and Per can talk about, because your last collection um, that you just recently showed at, um, uh, London Fashion Week was kind of like, you know, it was a collection out beyond just clothes. It was like you had interesting mm -hmm. shoes, there was, there was like pins and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what was kind of, do you see there's a change in that sense? Do you see when you're designing? Uh, maybe. I think uh, I always, especially this season, I wanted to create like a wardrobe, I guess, or a, yeah, I did want to do that. And then I think the accessories 
uh, they are basically what they are made up of is sort of precious things that sort of collects around me. So I was working with the pattern hook, we made them in silver, we were working with the bottle caps, and we did a tiara of kind of champagne, cork wires, but in silver, and then obviously... A whole piece of bottle caps. The hot piece, the, what, the hot pot piece, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> bottle cap uh, vest. Um, so for me, it's kind of, you know, uh, an accessory is really a place where you can uh, make something really, really precious. Um, but then I was looking at them today just to kind of prepare for my uh, commercial, commercial side of the brand to go to Paris. And uh, they are actually quite, really quite masculine, the accessories. But I did sit down with Anna, my stylist, and I was kind of, do you know, you know as a woman, you know, what, what is this? Would you buy this? Um, and she, uh, I think, you know, um, they are, I mean, I guess menswear actually is now unisex always, yeah. I think. Um, and um, what is my point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's yeah. interesting to hear because obviously now you're yeah. going to see yeah. like buyers in Paris yes. and you're, yeah. uh, you're coming to yeah. them with your collection that you mm -hmm. just showed. But obviously you're mm -hmm. showing them this bottle cap top. How are yeah. you, you know, like how are you, Mark, how is that going to change from if you're offering them, okay, guys, you can buy this mm -hmm. and put it in your store, mm -hmm. um, how are you going to approach that? Do you have like kind of um, already an idea of how you're going to like adapt it? Um, I'm going to bring it to Paris, but I don't, you know, I don't expect to sell uh, yeah. loads of it. But uh, I think, you know, for me, it's kind of adding to the story. Uh, it's about, you know, throughout this collection, it's kind of about making some things quite ordinary, quite precious. And I think within the accessories, I had a chance to really kind of play with that. Mm -hmm. And we kind of touched on, you know, money being sort of fun, having fun with fashion. And I think for me, I think that's important, but I need something more. It can't just be fun. It needs to be um, some layers in there, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and how they are made as well. I, you know, it's Hussam El Oud so, who has made these pieces. Yeah. And uh, I collaborated with him and I think, um, um, how these are put together and how they are made is really quite precious. So yeah. um, it's not just fun, it's actually quite uh, <laughs> <laughs> heavy. serious, heavy, yeah. not heavy, but you know, they're quite uh, delicate and beautiful yeah. objects. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, let's see, but I think uh, there is definitely um, a market for men's, men's accessories and uh, um, I'm, you know, I'm looking into explore that even yeah. further. Um, and there's definitely, like, I think we've seen now in London Fashion Week, there's, like, there hasn't been that many shows that were, like, kind of show-stopping, but the ones that were, they were really interesting, and I think they were, like, shown as brands. So whether we're talking about Charles Jeffrey, whether we're talking about Craig Green, whatever we think aesthetically of those brands, they were actually kind of brand shows. They were beyond just, oh, this is a collection of beautiful clothes. They were, like, performances, shows, like, explorations of what that brand is. Um, Obviously, you've worked with Craig Green, you've worked with Alexander McQueen, with Tom Brown. Do you, do you think, how, like, has it changed a lot? Do you think from your experience, like from, the, for example, working on an Alexander McQueen collection, do you think yeah. menswear, you know, how you created a show and then how you sold it afterwards? How did that kind of... I think, I mean, all those three designers, they, they need to create strong theatrical shows. They do it because that's what's, that's what's ingrained in them. That's what they're driven by. They're driven by the ability to be in this industry so they can create and do the experience and have the theater. I mean, Craig always wants to create sculpture within his work. It's kind of ingrained in him. Um, Tom and Lee had a very strong, they really wanted to do theater. That's what they all started with. I think the only difference now is you can put anything you want on the catwalk. There are people who would love that, but you've always got that barrier between does the store want to buy it or not? Because it, you basically are putting the, you're putting the pressure on the store to sell it. And now you've got the ability to have direct to customer. And you've got the ability from somebody's brand, like being able to, you know, if somebody sees this on your Instagram account, somebody mm -hmm. can say, oh, I really want that. You've got more chance of selling it directly to a customer yeah. than a store coming in and mm -hmm. saying, no, I love it, but I'm not putting my budget towards that. I'm much more comfortable putting my budget towards those pair of trousers and that jacket, the, mm -hmm. the coat that you've done, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've just got that. Um, I think that's what's really changed. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, you've, unless you have your own stores and unless you're willing to take the risk of putting your budget towards yeah. something which mm -hmm. is more experimental and more yeah. special, that customer can now find you yeah. and mm -hmm. you can actually sell 
like direct, whether they message you through Instagram, whether mm -hmm. they message you directly to the brand. Mm -hmm. There are collectors out there who come to all the big brands mm -hmm. and they take something off the runway and that's really how those big, very special, exp expensive pieces are sold. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you, you mentioned the coat, so I'm just gonna... Yeah. Uh, we, so we did actually make these bottle caps um, with the silver setting as buttons in. Okay. So there is like some diluted elements, yeah. which I think, you know, is kind of a nice uh, offering in a, yeah. like a retail, uh, from a retail mm. point of view. Just seasonal details. Seasonal <laughs> details, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. And, and then you can put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, like, a lot of designers do. Harry, like, obviously, talking about experimental, I mean, Machine is the first one to celebrate, kind of, in, when it comes to London, it's super celebratory or, of those like actual catwalk pieces. Mm -hmm. You often have, you know, stuff that no one else has because, you know, you're yeah. ready to like fill that gap mm -hmm. of like experimental buys. So how does that work? I mean, like you said about people contacting people directly, as soon as a show happens, like with Quake or something, we'll have people immediately messaging us yeah. like for these, because they want show pieces. And sometimes like the pieces they want, we actually, they're actually like, the brand can't make them because yeah. you need it for the show. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I know that Com, for instance, sell off their like big pieces to like collectors after the show and stuff like that. Like VA, VACs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but for us, um, we, I mean, most of our clients, they want to buy like the show pieces. Yeah. So when we go to a showroom and we see the, I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's a good example. Um, people say to us like, oh, these are commercial, like these, this is really commercial. And for us, that's an instant turn off because yeah. We don't want something commercial and it won't work for us. Mm -hmm. So when we see the show pieces, then it's like really about the show. Like you were saying about the accessories per, um, like they're part of your show. So like this is something that we like and we can celebrate this, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So probably this is something that we would buy. Mm -hmm. I really like the watch they were wearing actually. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> because if something's like really part of the collection, then it's like we want to like represent that in the shop. Well, I, you know, just sorry again to speak about me, 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 but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but in terms of the show and, you know, I do work really closely with Tony who does the set and then Hussam who, who does my accessories. So it's all kind of evolves together yeah. somehow. So uh, yeah, it's definitely part of the, mm. of the look. I think it's really like, it's really important for, uh, I think a lot of like bigger stores don't do this, but like, it's really important to represent the brand. Yeah. yeah. And we really want to like make sure that we are doing that. I just want to bring up. So we have a we had created a collage here um, that's basically from Arnie's last collection. They did um, on the catwalk. They did these different aprons, and they were illustrated by a ceramicist and artist Magdalena Suarez Frimkes. And then, um, for example, this is from Browns. Um, they kind of bought a T-shirt version <laughs> of that illustration. So. Um, do you think, like, there's obviously a business here. There's obviously, you know, straight up, like, okay, this is a really pretty detail. We're going to blow it up and put it on a T-shirt and sell it for 200, 300 pounds. Um, is Marnie kind of, Marnie's new vision with Francesco, um, it's very kind of heavily styled, I would say, which he takes probably from Prada, um, where he worked before, which is like, you know, there's a, like a complete vibe for a whole collection. And there's these little hats, there's like things that you, unfortunately for some, uh, you won't be able to see in a shop. Um, how do you think, how successful does he, does Marnie do that kind of translation from, <coughs> like in terms of menswear especially, from the catwalk into these commercial pieces? Well, it's a big collection. Mm. I mean, I think that if you edit that collection, you've probably got a very strong commercial collection underneath mm. it. It's just, there's so many pieces in there. Like I say, mm, the yeah. styling can, can make you think that things are more unwearable than they are. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, showrooms can be a very different place from the... Yeah. <laughs> showrooms can be a very different place from the show, and, and, and they should be. Because, you know, the show is there to do a vision. The show yeah. is there mm -hmm. to show the excitement and, the, and just how far the designer wants to push it. But the showroom is there to, to put together a collection for, you know, not, I mean, Machine, you, have a, you look for something which is, you know, I know when you come in to buy Craig, you're looking for something which is very special and different. Mm. But, and as does Dover Street, but a lot of other stores, they need a collection that they can sell to a 48 year old. A wide range of yeah, clients. Yeah, a wide range yeah. of clients. And, you know, retail is hard. Yeah. And people don't like to take risks when they're sitting on stock and nobody wants to yeah. see their stuff not being sold. Yeah. So I would say that looking at the size of the collection, the pieces are not so strong. Yeah. It's the styling that makes it 
look more exciting. Do we think that Marnie is good at like kind of showing that vision? Like, is it, do you feel like you know what Marnie as a brand is right now? Because like, I feel like that's what, you know, that's what Prada, even though aesthetically maybe it's not to my taste every time, like I can completely appreciate the idea of like, you know, at the end of the day, you'll buy a burgundy like nylon blazer and a match matching pair of trousers, but it's styled with a belt over it, a backpack, a hat, like hairstyled in a certain way. So like, do you think, like whether that's good or bad, like do you think Marnie does it well right now? I, Harry, maybe you can, or uh, Megan, like sorry, whoever I'm wants. Sorry, talking too much. Um, well, looking at the past two seasons since um, Riso took over, I think that it's quite confusing with, I mean, when you read the reviews as well, I think it's really like a mixed kind of bag yeah. of people are a bit like not really sure where he's going. They know that he's doing something, but they're not yeah. really sure what it is. But with this collection, I think that he's really like moved on with like the illustrations they've come into this season as well. And I think the collection, yeah. as I said, it looks really young. And it's, I think Should we it's, look at the new collection maybe? Yeah. Sorry to start no, with it's, I think it's really commercial. There's a lot of different fabrics in there. And I like the fact that he's keeping the, the fur kind of, yeah as part of that and like the kind of all the patches and stuff. I think it's, I think it's really nice collection. Do we think fur is good or bad? <laughs> is that a big discussion that we maybe shouldn't even I open? I think we maybe not open that yeah. one. <laughs> no, but I mean in terms of like, I feel like it's That's a very, very current um, discussion as well. And I think Marnie comes in because like as a mm. brand, it started on like, mm. like kind of on the back of being a fur company. like. Now even Gucci, like so many brands are kind of taking themselves out of the fur game. Do you think that me that means Marnie has kind of a better chance in a market here, or um, you've or still got Fendi can... taking it? Yeah, I mean that's spice. like no one can touch that. But, I think um, there's there's such a big market for fur. I mean, my first job in fashion was with a company that was lambskin and leather company, um, very much not catwalk based, but sold hugely in Asia. And I mean, the pieces were just wearable, and you know. Yeah. It, in certain climates, that is what people yeah. want. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's always going to be differing opinions on it. And I think if that's where they started, I think they'll probably keep an element of it, whether they yeah. venture into um, sort of really high quality faux fur, yeah. um, you know, because mm -hmm. that's all obviously now available. I think the thing that Marnie have done really well this season, though, is actually, um, yes, the styling and the pieces are, like the styling brings the quite saleable pieces to a, um, catwalk audience, but actually the set and the production of it, yeah. which we were chatting about earlier, mm -hmm. where the guests are sat on radiators and snare drums and yeah. <laughs> all sorts. Um, and I think that kind of brings in the playfulness more than uh, mm -hmm. the pieces themselves in, in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. Um, because watching the live stream, you can kind of go three looks and you kind of go, oh, well, this is just mm -hmm. quite commercial. Yeah. And then you get the odd sort of a bit more out there piece, but it's it's just interesting how brands use the productions. And last season's collection for men's also was a massive production. Yes. It had the sort of VR element mm. to it. So um, maybe if we talk about a little bit for this collection to kind of speak about it out loud, there was a collaboration with an artist called Frank uh, Navin, or Navin, um, who's an artist and a musician as well, a part of the Aluminum Group um, music band. Uh, and um, basically the whole idea was to play with found objects. Um, and the whole collection in its, um, in its press release that we've got here is about this world traveler and kind of a guy that goes all over the world from you know India, China, Africa, England, and picks up stuff, um, like elements from it. Um, whether it's cultural appropriation or not, I would mm -hmm. leave to the viewer to decide or the our, like our viewers here. But kind of the idea of like a world traveler, and that's why the set, um, which was I think, if I'm not incorrect, was also designed or, or in collaboration with Frank um, Navin, and it's. Um, it's, yeah, it's like found objects. So like some people are sitting on a basketball that's wrapped with like um, tubes. Some people are sitting on radiators. Some people are sitting on um, vacuum cleaners, like boxes and different stuff, which I'm sure it was amusing for like big fashion editors <laughs> to see like, you know, the heads of like magazines sitting on these like super uncomfortable. Maybe there was like some sort of like purposeful seating mm. arrangements, like who you don't like <laughs> to put them on like the Maybe. most uncomfortable thing. <laughs> Um, but with the jewelry here, for example, if we're talking about a commercial aspect, there was um, there was jewelry, there was these necklaces that were also playing on the aspect of um, found objects. So it's kind of like 
um, mishmash idea. Um, what do we think? Do we like the collection? Um, do we kind of like the styling of it? I think, if I'm not incorrect, I think Francesco Rizzo himself does the styling for the collection. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what do we guys think? Uh, I don't know, I was kind of thinking of these blankets and lots of fabrics and I was thinking of this, uh, uh, so, you know, we're talking about these kind of found objects and, you know, kind of making something out of nothing, but then the kind of scale of some of the garments and the blankets, I was thinking of this Van, Van Eyck painting, you know, uh, Andolfini couple, it's like this big, big green dress and she's kind of holding the dress and it was a debate, if, is she pregnant or not, but actually no, she had to hold the dress because it's so such so much fabric and that was a sign of um, wealth yes and also it was green so that that in that time it meant um, success in finance so I think there is like a mix between something very rich but also something very uh, not so valuable yeah. um, and which I think is quite interesting I think that whole that notion of using a lot of fabric is quite interesting mm. somehow it's to, yeah. to me it's a signal of something very it's very like in a different like if I draw the like kind of parallel with what Consuela Castiglioni did, it's much more as I said rough, rougher on the edges. Yeah. Like she would never do stuff like that. She would never like do like this big of a mishmash. She always did kind of like an awkward silhouette, but there was still kind of some elegance with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I think like that's what I think people get scared of. Like this pink coat that just part is stunning. Mm -hmm. Like these pieces are actually kind of I like I absolutely would love to like wear them. But then there's like that styling mm -hmm. aspect to it. So like there's these ties that are untucked. Mm. Is that fastening, cool. those ties? Is that a fast, I don't know, let's think, see. But yeah, I don't know, like the boots, you know, I think what Marnie does as a brand, and since, like, so since 1998, when it started, it has such a strong accessories game. So they make um, eyewear in collaboration with Machron, the same as um, Calvin Klein and like a few other brands. They make old shoes, like their trunk bag is probably one of the most like best-selling women's wear bags. So do we think, like, he's obviously in the show, he's obviously tapping that with men, that, tapping into that with men's wear. Do you think that's kind of a viable market right now? Do you think it's, um, yeah, that Marnie has a chance at being like the next big men's accessories brand? <clears throat> mm, I think the accessories, they, were, they don't come out read so strong here on the kind of live stream, mm. so I am not quite sure. Um, I saw some, some really nice kind of, I mean, they were kind of like feminine, kind of like a side bag with fur on it, and it was they're really cool, and I like the fact that it's, it's a bit, it's like we said how people these days, like with off-white and stuff, it's kind of like men with handbags, and not, and you know, yeah. very kind of, um, you know, like straight men, mm -hmm. and it's like, I think it's really cool, it's a really interesting thing to go into. First of all, when I first saw it, I was like, mm, I'm not into this. And now I'm like, actually, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's, um, I mean, the menswear market for accessories is growing. It's yeah. really, really growing. But it seems easier to go into the off-white. It seems easier to have a bit of a sportswear mm -hmm. element. Yeah. It, it just yeah. feels that, although it's growing, you've got a traditional yeah. menswear accessory, which is becoming more, more accessible for people and more okay mm. for, pe for guys to wear. And then you've got that more sporty one. Mm. And um, yeah, of course the fashion accessory is growing for men, but is it growing at the rate of those other two, mm. yeah. those other two elements? Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things I was gonna say is as well, is that it's a really great way of like, because obviously like we're saying it's young and everything and it's really good for that, but a lot of these people, they can't, they can't afford to buy it because it's yeah. too expensive. So I think accessories and things are a really good way for people to break into having yeah. something from that brand. I think it's what a lot of big brands do because obviously they want to like kind of garner those kids that are now 18 or 20 mm. that in 10 years they might be able to afford that brand. Mm. But like the problem with, I feel like with Marnie, even mm. though I'm absolutely in love with it, and I'm gonna repeat that like so many times, <laughs> it's the problem that I'm not sure whether it's a brand that's big enough to kind of, you know, like start like luring people in. Mm. Um, they have done in 2012, they've done a big collaboration with H&M um, on the coll like a collection, which was kind of a shocking, thing for me personally, because I would never expect Marnie to be in that kind of realm where it was, you know, Versace and um, like very different kind of aesthetic and very like um, big, bigger brands that were working with him, um, like Karl Lagerfeld. Um, I know that on a list of how much, like it's probably on the lower side of like the list of all of their collaborations in terms of selling, <coughs> it's probably not as successful because of that. Um, 
But yeah, like I think what Marnie is doing again really well now, it's like kind of owning its quirkiness. It's being that kind of feeling with every collection is going more and more into like that its own league where it's not, maybe I feel like it's gonna be like, when, it's, when it the, he showed his first collection, it was quite, people were like, oh, that's very Gucci inspired. Yeah. Because that's it was like that Gucci eclecticism. Mm -hmm. But it, people were like, you know, that's the decadence of Gucci yeah. that came into Marnie. I think with this collection especially, it kind of like grew up from that. So yeah. like the, like it kind of has its own um, mm -hmm. storyline. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what do we think like in terms of like the future of Marnie? Where do you think it will go? I yeah, no, no, I think I'm. Yeah, it's quite. I'm, you, you get quite excited to see more, uh, mm. but I don't know these patches. And yeah, I think um, something maybe uh, more refined. I think can come out of this. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think I'm excited to see more. Do we think yeah. Francesco has the, like now in the whole 2018? We've, we're like in the midst of people swapping houses. So Phoebe leaving Celine. Like, do we think Francesco is gonna stay for a bit at Marnie, and that it's kind of the um, OTB group and uh, Renzo Russo are happy with him? Like, what are, I mean, we can only think, but I'm just wondering, what do you think in terms of like the expectations for Marnie right now and how it's coming out? Is it like on its rise? Or? Uh, I feel like that he will stay for a while and I think that mm -hmm. it's a really important time to um, for him right now because everyone's kind of swapping houses as you said so I think that they've got a really good opportunity to create something new and fresh mm -hmm. and I mean I think that maybe it could become like a really kind of new cool thing that people are buying into because but also in terms of stores I was thinking that one of the important things I think, I mean, I would think this because of Machine A. But, um, <laughs> but I think it's, it's kind of important to have these kind of boutique stockists that are doing showpieces and doing things like this because you need your brand to be represented well in places. And if you just, I mean, the sh if the show's great, but then when you go to yeah. a That's bigger store like and you it. don't see anything like it, then I don't think it's doing a, a very good job. Mm -hmm. yeah, it needs to have that translation. I think that's how you can keep, you need to keep yeah. like it cool and keep it young, do by you, having these small stockists that can represent you. Do you think you would like kind of hold someone like Marnie in Machine A? Because I think what that's the thing with Marnie is like, uh, like I think smaller boutiques are holding, like buying cool designers. Like you're gonna buy like a rough piece that's mm. probably gonna be nowhere else. But it's because you know that even though it's quirky and like, and weird, you're gonna sell it because it's mm. rough and people want it. For my question with Marnie is whether people want those showpieces and whether a, like a brand boutique like Machine A or LNCC are gonna like kind of, you know, decide, yeah, we're gonna like, let's go and buy Marnie this like weird jacket and we know that like our buyers, like our shopper isn't gonna be like, oh, why do you have Marnie in it? <laughs> because I think that's with menswear, I feel like. With women's wear, women, I mean, this is so probably like generalization, mm -hmm. but like it's, women, women are not freaked out by like having a Versace next to a, um, a Bottega Veneta, next to a Marnie, next to a Chanel. Like mm -hmm. it's not as kind of weird. With men, like when you look at magazines, when you look at like mm -hmm. everything, it's like probably like, like kind of, you've got the dapper gentlemen, you've got, sorry, you've got the um, street, like street guys, um, like they're wearing streetwear and like sneakers. And sometimes, and very rarely do you see kind of overlapping of those. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is what Marnie is doing right now. Actually, it's kind yeah, of right. being kind of cool, yeah. but also being very like kind of classic menswear in a way. Where would you put trees in this world? Um, sorry? Where would you put Dries mm. in this world? Oh, Dries. I mean, Dries is, that's exactly why I love Dries, because it's, it's his own league. It's own world. And, exactly. And look, he doesn't have any, you know, he doesn't have any investments in his company. He's running that business on his own and on his own passion and successfully. He's doing only four collections a year. So he's kind of in his own world on its own. I would personally put Marnie in that category right now. But whether, you know, that's my... I wanted to succeed and I want to be able to, mm -hmm. if I had the money, to buy that pink giant coat. Mm -hmm. But where would I buy it? You know, mm -hmm. except from, which they don't have, I think, online, an online store. I bet, you, I bet you can find on, if you go to Marnie on the Instagram, I bet you could go message Maybe them. Maybe I can message Francesco <laughs> with Slice of Bambi on Instagram, which is his uh, Insta handle. Maybe I can message him directly. No, but that's, that's, a, that's my question with Marnie and whether it, you know, you can now see, like, how did McQueen in the 90s, like, do with his menswear, if uh, you can kind of... I mean, yeah, the, but there was a, a strong, consistent silhouette that, that, 
there was always the suiting, which was um, the McQueen suit with the McQueen shoulder. There's, there's, a, there's like two or three shirts which are absolutely consistent in the brand and have been, those shirts are created every season in different colorways and people still go in and buy the harness shirt. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, it's, there's... Yeah, there's a little um, metal, yeah. 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 You know, and, it, and guys still want to know that they can go and buy a shirt they used to have in the past. They, they can go and buy something that they've worn to death and they want to be able to get a new version of it. Um, and yeah, of course, there would be things coming down the runway which were very, um, they felt quite effeminate in those days because I mean, I'm going back to McQueen shows 20 years ago yeah. and you look at some of those shows and now they look at them and think, oh God, that's just really normal now, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but... You did like, there was, there was a season, I think in 1999, where there was like corsets on guys and like, that was like... Well, they were never, they were never sold <laughs> yeah. and never meant to be, and he didn't think of it like that. He put the show as telling a story, yeah. you know, there was, um, he wanted to tell a story when it was up there in the show and but he wanted people to still buy the pieces that were, that he took seriously, you know, even whether it's expensive or not expensive, but if it was a coat with an embroidery all over it, he still expected men to buy it and they did. Yeah. But, you know, he would obviously style a show yeah. mm -hmm. for the narrative. I think what is important for menswear, I think women's wear has that as well, but men's wear, there's a lot of kind of like, okay, there's a core collection or a signature piece Craig is like there where you, with the quilt to jacket, yeah. you'll have it season in and out, like people are gonna buy it and girls, guys, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, there's Molly Goddard with a tool dress where it's like, yeah. whatever she designs, she knows that she's gonna sell an X amount mm -hmm. of these dresses. I think that's um, an important thing to kind of establish quite early, like, and that's why Molly's yeah. so successful because quite early in her career, she established that mm -hmm. signature piece. Mm -hmm. um, per, how do you, do you have something that you think, you know, when you're designing as a process, do you think, are you thinking like that? Are you thinking like, oh, we need that um, signature piece? And maybe if we, anyone can say like, do we think that Marnie's menswear has anything like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I, so I have like this trouser, trouser. Mm. That's exactly what I was trouser trying to say. Trouser guy. <laughs> the high-waisted one, or? Like, uh, yeah, I do yeah. quite a large trouser, and which has changed uh, slightly, update, uh, slightly smaller, and you know. Uh, it's this one there. Yeah, it's that yeah. one, yeah. And that is one of kind of those pieces that Biocom and look for. But then also, I did have some feedback that they're looking at some of the accessories and the trouser, so. Yeah. It is like a kind of a range there, but yeah, yeah definitely there is the, the trouser. Yeah, so I mean, uh, so, and, and you kind of go around, like if you're designing for an X collection, you're gonna like, obviously knowing that that will sell, mm -hmm. you're gonna put that in your collection. Yeah, I always try to kind of work, uh, the, it's quite a nice, um, for me, uh, for me at least, it's an interesting silhouette that I can, I'm still quite yeah. interested in, so, yeah, there's something I want to develop, and then you know, obviously, there is a challenge to make that into something commercial as well, uh, which is not there for granted. Yeah, you know? uh, that has to be um, trialed. Yeah. Yeah. You have to respect, you know, mm. you've got a customer or a fan of the brand who can see you putting something like this out. Mm. They don't always have the money that that season to buy it, mm. you know, but they can look at something because I really want to buy that. Mm -hmm. You've You've got to keep these things in. People mm. can look at it and take yeah. a bit of time. They take a bit of money yeah. to get to yeah. get round to buying yeah. it. They need an occasion to be able to buy it. Yeah. You know, sometimes. But it takes a bit of time for the designer as well because sometimes you make something that is quite, you know, it's you, you're into it, but you mm. need you also need time to understand about this. this. Yeah. Uh, so you need to make it yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we yeah. think? Do we think Marnie's there? Like obviously, there's. It's been only a year since his first collection. <laughs> we feel like mm. he's been there for a while, thanks to the schedule and because he's mm. shown already six collections. This is his seventh one. So mm. like, it feels like he's been there for ages. But um, do we think he's established kind of his sensibility like quite strong? Because it is this like vintage aspirational yeah. um, like moment where there's like. I mean, there's a lot of if we can get the. Um, uh, video or the sorry the images of the collect of the new collection up um, you can we can see like there's like so much patchwork so there's so much kind of elaborate mm -hmm. like elaborate stuff in it is there for you anything that you would that stands out for you I'd like to see the edit I'd like to yeah. see how they edit it because yeah. this show is about it it's about a collector it's yeah. about yeah. somebody who goes around collecting so of course it's eclectic in that way but I think it's really interesting what they when they put it together at the end, how they edit it themselves and what the story for 
that, you know, not the story of the show, which is we've picked up all these things because you can walk into a, a store and you do lose some kind of consistency of what yeah. you stand for. But I would imagine they'll pull this together and they'll put their, their own edit together yeah. and that will be the tighter narrative that's... It would be really interesting to see all these, a lot of printed pieces in the collection and mm -hmm. how that will translate. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, what my question was before, it's like, okay, who's going to stock them? Because I feel like more bigger kind of commercial um, stores like Selfridges or Harrods, like they're probably going to buy the knitwear. Like the knitwear is really like beautifully made. It's a bit cropped, maybe a bit mm -hmm. trendy. Maybe they'll like lengthen it a little bit or the shirting. That's yeah. quite classic. But like these pieces that, you know, the printed ones, mm -hmm. I would, I'm really interested to see like whether we're actually going to mm -hmm. see them. The jacket. Yeah. <laughs> the I mean, one. I just worry that, yeah, you'd end up seeing just, just that pink shirt on its own with a few with, with some other shirts yeah. and you're not feeling any of this kind of all these prints mm. and the patchwork and the silhouette I think with men's a lot of times you get a silhouette that completely changes when it goes into the store yeah. so like they show a suit um, which is like oversized and like really weird and then like you see it in a store in the same print but it's just a streamlined suit yeah um, that's the normal thing to do mm. yeah well, it's, it's I'm like you apply yeah. your I mean I think they do a very good overcoat actually Imani I think it's very mm -hmm. good for yeah. it's a good silhouette it's an easy yeah. it's really good outerwear silhouette you know so um, the park as well feels quite Imani yeah, yeah it does yeah. this whole this whole plaid and you yeah. know the checks they feel quite yeah they all feel like quite I think that's, the outerwear is a really good um, example of kind of how they can bring their sort of prints and their quite, um, to some people, maybe out there sort yeah. of style um, into a wearable garment. Yeah. I think a lot more people are willing to be a bit more out there with, with outerwear um, yeah. rather than with kind of a shirt for the office. Yeah. It's, it's that sort of... Yeah. It's again, like I think accessories are a big thing. If we go like a few looks back, there's a backpack, which looks kind of, you know, like an Adidas mm. and Pharrell backpack. You know, it doesn't necessarily look um, super edgy or weird, but like it works with the styling. So do we think like we're gonna be able to see these accessories? Do you think like, because I haven't seen any of the Marnie's accessories except for sunglasses and mm. shoes. Mm. But even that, like you mm. see that the, he's had so many, like for the last few seasons, there was those shearling shoes, mm. like shearling boots and kind of with like exposed shearling coming out of it. You had them on the catwalk in blue, in like purple, in every color. And then you see them obviously in like a brown and a black. Um, mm. Do we think it's, is that like general for like in general in menswear? It's still like kind of being so streamlined. Or is, I'm trying to understand whether it's Marnie's kind of like, Marnie's are playing a weird game here, whether it's like kind of mis, um, misplaced. I'm going to be really boring. There's, there's high units you've got to sell on accessories. Like, you know, when you're producing it, you need to get the orders to be a certain size to make that. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the handmade yeah. pieces that you're, that you're doing yeah. right now, but you know, if you're making a nylon bag mm -hmm. like that, no mm -hmm. factory is going to touch it unless you're turning over a certain amount of numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you have lower numbers with a coat, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm guessing that they need that demand and they need the mm -hmm. edit to be in to actually mm -hmm. start or a one-off hit. You know, when, like when Balenciaga did that bag and everybody wanted it, you know, yeah. it's, that's when you start, when you've got your own retail, that's when you start. But Balenciaga is a great example because in terms of, you know, accessories, they actually sell stuff that they show on the yeah. catwalk. And that's, that's a really kind of, even for like an edgy brand, like a bag, it's actually sold exactly how you see it. the same print. Yep. There's no kind of, you know, changes here. But they have a, they have always had a bag business. They've always got those doors that have bought the bags. Yeah. They've always had a bag business. Yeah. Mm. So. So do you think like I mean I think is there a big di like is there a big difference between men's and women's when it's like in part of the same brand? Um, do you feel like in Marnie, obviously some, some brands have different designers for men's and women's, for example, Dior, um, like Louis Vuitton, but for other brands like, um, like Prada or Marnie, they have the same designer. Do you think there's a cohesion between the men's and the women's on the Marnie, um, on the case of Marnie that we're discussing now? I mean, to me, it kind of feels <laughs> like you have to kind of find your feet with what's your staple. And I think if he's only been there for, you know, so long, he's obviously exploring that. Mm. And it, I can only guess that it would be sort of an experimentation and see what the strengths are. He's obviously kept with the, the, the Marnie principles, but um, 
it's just going to be interesting to see how it grows. And especially as lots of people are moving around, I think he's got that kind of time to sort of... I think it is, there's a lot of stories in here, like the nylon, mm. there's, if you go back a bit, there's a few like Chinese kind of, these, um, like a red Sorry, shirt. Like, yeah. And I was quite surprised to see this amongst lots of other things. So I just think there's a lot of stories in there. So maybe he's just mm. playing around still. I feel like it's super, it's very, like I know that word is thrown around in fashion, but it is very eclectic. It's very irreverent of like, and I feel what it's doing, it's like, it's not looking at what anyone else is doing right now, in a sense. And that's why maybe his popularity isn't as strong as some other brands, mm -hmm. where I think people don't really know where Marnie is right now. Um, can we compare it to any other brands right now <coughs> that we think are kind of in the same, in terms of menswear, in the same category like Marnie? Does anything come on top of, like, off the top of your head? Like, something that you would, you know, you could see it on the same kind of, in the same department mm. in the store. I'm not sure if Trees is the right one, but that's the closest, like... Just because the textures and the colours. Yeah, the, the colours and the, 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 colors colors. And the textures. Yeah. Aesthetically, probably. Like, yeah. uh, kind of yeah. visually. Yeah. But then again, that was actually what I wanted to hear, because that's <laughs> my point, because I think it is unique in its kind mm. of world. and. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because for buyers, it might be kind of difficult to place it in their stores. Mm. Um, that's why I kind of ask whether you think you would see a Marnie piece in a machine aid. Mm. Would you? I mean, I think that the way it's going, like from this collection, I think the way it's moving forward, it seems like something in really interesting. It's difficult because Marnie is known for its consistency, which I and mean, something being consistent m kind of implies it's almost boring. Yeah. But I also like it's a really good staple piece. Like everyone's buying, people are buying money because, before because they're buying like something that they know they can get over and over again. Whereas if it's something which is to become more kind of fashion, then it's possible. The way I'm looking at it now, it's like progressing somewhere really young and fun. So it's possible. <laughs> cool, do we have any more thoughts on the collection? I feel like, We've gone and talked about kind of different impressions of it, but do we have any final words in regards to this collection as to like... Nice casting. Mm. Nice casting, mm. yeah. That was really... Yeah, it was yeah. interesting, especially I think in Milan, to see kind of a, like, a bigger variety of um, men, not just skinny young boys, yeah. skinny older boys. How many looks were there? It was like 40 something. Yeah, it was like around the 40, 40 looks. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Should we give a round of applause to Francesco and yeah. Marnie and all of you? There you go. <laughs>